Hey everyone, Vosco here from Parse. Today we're going to talk about getting involved in the open source community and contributing to Parse Server. Let's get started. Since we released Parse Server about 60 days ago, there's been more than 400 pull requests and over 900 issues created in our repository. There's been a lot of activity and a lot of people very interested to get involved. In this video, we're going to go through the process of creating a test case, which will fail, and making a change to the Parse Server code base, and then uh, watching that test pass. And it'll also cover the generals of downloading Parse Server and running the tests and being able to, to get involved in that community. We'll also talk about submitting pull requests and going through the code review process. We'll start again on parse.com and we'll click on the big View on GitHub button to go to the GitHub repository. Now that we're here, you're going to want to fork your own copy of Parse Server. So click the Fork button. It asks where to put it. You'll probably only have your name. Uh, so pick that. And now I have my own copy of Parse Server forked from the original. So now we want to go ahead and clone this. So let's copy the URL of the repo and go to our terminal and do git clone and paste in the parse server URL. Now that it's downloaded, we'll go change directory into the parse server folder. Then we'll run npm install to set up all the dependencies. This won't take too long, probably about 30 seconds. Okay, once npm completes, it's a good idea to go ahead and run the test suite. So you can type npm test. This can take anywhere from like two to five minutes to complete. Um, it will download a copy of Mongo and run it just for the tests using something called MongoDB Runner. And then it'll launch a uh, parse server and go through all of the different test scenarios. There are hundreds of test cases. And it's a really good idea to, to check some of them out and see how we actually uh, build a lot of this logic. You can see the tests are running now, and they're all coming back green. We try our best to keep the master branch clean uh, so that there shouldn't be any broken tests that get checked into master. Things happen occasionally, so it, it's not out of the question, but it's a good idea if you're going to try and contribute to Parse Server once you uh, clone everything to run the tests and make sure everything is green so that you know when you do some work that you're not creating additional test failures. Okay, that was pretty quick. It actually only took 53 seconds. And you can see that there were 831 tests and zero failures. Very good. So what I want to do is walk through the process of making a change to Parse Server. And we'll start with creating a test case, which will fail because we haven't actually implemented that code or that feature. Then we'll make a change to Parse Server to make sure that that test passes. And then we'll run the full test case to make sure that we haven't broken anything else. And then we can actually go through uh, with submitting our code as a pull request to the official Parse Server repo. So what I'm going to do is open up Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to open the new Parse Server project folder that we downloaded. You can see that we have a spec folder, and inside the spec folder are all of the different tests being broken out. So let's go take a look at parseobject.spec. So you can look through here and see how we've done some tests. A lot of simple ones at top, at the top, and then things get a little more complicated. Like uh, here's one. When you save, that it doesn't add any other keys other than created at and updated at. When you make a parse object, you know, you get an object ID, and it also creates timestamps for created at and updated at. So the code basically creates a new test object, saves it with no extra data on it, so it's empty, and then it takes a look at the keys after it was saved and makes sure that there's only two. 
So let's come up with some change to make, and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here. Well, this is a contrived example, but let's say you don't think a user should be able to create an object with a column name of master. Um, and so you, we can create a test case, and we could say uh, the column name master is not allowed. And we could start to build this test case by creating a parse object. New parse object, some object, and we're going to set the column master to equal high. And we are going to do a, we're going to do object.save. And then the issue here is we actually want this to fail. So if this block runs, it succeeded, and that's no good. So we're going to say fail, object should not have saved. If it succeeds, we get this other block down here, or if it fails, I'm sorry, we wanted it to fail. We wanted it to fail because we shouldn't be able to save that object. So here we're going to call done, which means we've succeeded. I'm going to fix the spacing here. Okay, so now we have a test case, and it should fail because we haven't actually made master an invalid column name, uh, and we want to run it. But we don't necessarily want to run the whole test case, the whole all, like all 800 tests. So if you change this uh, function name from it to f it, like focused test, we can go ahead and run npm test again, and it should only run that that one test that we just made. So let's see how that goes. It runs one test and it failed. So two errors. One is after the fail, I should have put a done call. So we see that it fails. So now we can actually go make a change to parse server and make this test pass. Now, when you get involved with developing in a large project, it may take some time to follow some code paths and find out the right way, uh, the right place to make specific changes. Uh, but it's something, you know, you take some time to figure out. Um, so here in Parse Server, we're going to go, I'm going to close the spec folder and I'm going to open the source folder. So there's probably several different ways of accomplishing this, um, but one that we're going to look at is inside transform.js. So transform.js is quite a helper library that, that does a lot of um, transformations, obviously, on things that come in um, in the REST API format, and it helps translate them into a Mongo format for the database, and vice versa. Um, and this transform key value function right at the top does a lot with um, schema uh, column names and uh, built-in fields. So what we can do is we could just add a condition here somewhere and we could say uh, case master if the field is master we are going to throw a new parse.error and we can have an error code invalid key name we'll copy this one from down here and parse.error.invalid key name master is an invalid field name and then break so now let's see if our test case passes ah we can see that it ran it ran just our test and it succeeded so now we can make sure that we didn't break anything else. We can go back to our test and we can remove the F and save it. And go ahead and run the test again and it'll run all 800. Again, this will take about a minute. Well, our tests have completed and you can see that one has failed. Um, and it's a test that uh, at the moment has, I guess, been kind of flaky where I think if we were to run them again, 
that it wouldn't fail, and you probably should, you know, give it another shot. So I'm going to do that now uh, and run them again. Um, but this test has been known to, like, work occasionally and succeed uh, and fail occasionally. Uh, and that's something that we'll work on. And, and that's another interesting pull request if someone wants to uh, make this HTTP request test uh, more reliable. Okay, the test ran, and this time it passed. So, you know, when in doubt, run it twice to make sure. Okay, so now we have the tests running successfully, and we're ready to package up our change, commit it, and then make a pull request against the, the main parse server repository. So we can actually, let's make a branch off of our current um, fork, and let's just call it uh, my PR one um, and then let's add the files that we have changed to staging, and then let's commit them with a message um, making master a reserved key name. Um, now you might get this if it's your first time doing something with Git um, that you need to configure your username and all this stuff, so you can actually do that. git config global user.name um, git config user.email and enter your own details, of course, which is hooked up to your GitHub account. And then you can change the commit that we just landed to change the author. And save the commit message. Okay, so now we've committed our code to our local, and we can actually push this to GitHub. And if you just type git push and hit enter, it's going to say, hey, there's no upstream branch, um, because it's a new one. And it'll tell you what you need to type, which is set upstream origin my PR1. And so now this has been pushed to GitHub. And then we can go to GitHub itself, and we can um, com make a pull request. A little button will pop up, and it'll show our my PR branch. Um, and this is actually making a pull request against my fork, but I want to change the head repository and say I want to make the PR against parse server. So I will pick this and... Okay, I think I did that wrong. Let's click back to the parse server, the official and let's do a new pull request. Oh, here it is. Okay, we're on parse platforms, parse server, and we have a push branch, my PR1. So I'm going to click that. There we go. Okay, so I had it right. Um, you didn't need to change the head fork. That's okay. Uh, and you could scroll down, and you could see the changes that were made. We added a test case to parse object, and we added a, a case to transform. Um, and we can write a nice comment to explain what it is and why it's necessary. And I'm just going to say this is for an example video. Um, example. Do not merge. <laughs> um, and we don't want to actually use this. And I'm going to hit Create Pull Request. So I'm doing this. This is now an official pull request against uh, Parse Server. And I just wanted to show you that a few things happen. Uh, we have continuous integration with Travis CI. And that will actually go ahead and run the tests for you. And it'll also do some code coverage analysis. And uh, we try and, and make that better. Uh, so I want to go back and show you uh, in the code of Parse Server, we have this uh, uh, contributing file with a little bit of information on contributing. Uh, you know, we welcome pull requests. And then there's some please do's. You know, take testing seriously. Uh, try and make sure whatever you attempt to add or change is tested. Um, you know, run the tests either for a file or for the whole project. And um, another thing that happens when you send in a pull request is once the CI stuff completes, 
it'll get a label. Uh, we use labels. Uh, GitHub review, review needed. Um, so we have a group of people. Oh, there it is. Uh, we have a bot which just added the review needed label. And so as this goes through code review, uh, someone might change the label on it and say, oh, this needs revision. And they'll ask you to make a change. Or they'll say it's accepted. Um, and then they'll probably just merge it depending on if you have uh, the ability to merge or not. We've started to add core contributors who are external um, from Facebook uh, who can now actually commit code as well. Um, but we go through very rigorous uh, review procedures. Um, so now that this is here, I just wanted to show you this, but I'm, I'm actually going to close this. Okay. So I encourage you to take a look at some of the different issues, some of the different pull requests, see how things go. Uh, it would be great if more people got involved in learning, uh, you know, the test cases and uh, looking at contributing to Parse Server. Uh, experiment, hack, let us know what you think. Really interested to get you involved in this. <laughs>